my math is correct, it is week 13 in the National Football League. Bear Bets Podcast is back. I'm your host, Chris Felica. Some people call me the bear. Some people call me Chris. Some people have other four-letter words for me as well. Jeff Schwartz, hopefully, is not one of them. Will Hill and Sammy P may be amongst that crowd, though, as well. But uh, how are we? I'm good. It's just, it's so crazy thing about the difference in like the NFL and college. Like NFL is week 13 and it feels like week one and two and three and four don't even matter where college football. It's like, well, Texas beat Alabama in week two. That, that's what matters. And, 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 and now we're like, in NFL, like, ah, like, ah, whatever. Someone beat someone else in week two or three. Who cares now? But unlike, unlike college, we have a specific playoff structure oh, where yeah. you've got divisions and we know and who you play is, twice and, and everything and we, yeah, and we yeah. know who, who we, we know the, the 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 guidelines for and the rules and the criteria of actually qualifying for the playoffs whereas in the college football playoff they have it nice subjective which is the way they like it that way it can keep many, it, they can keep it very ambiguous that way they can kind of mold it to whatever they kind of want to do how many nfl divisions are still up for grabs right now the the, uh, the NFC East is up for grabs. Uh, the NFC South. NFC South and East. And that's probably it. 49ers are going to win the West. What about the Philly and Cowboys? No? Yeah, I guess you could say that's kind of uh, yeah, you, you could say that's kind of up for grabs. Okay. What about the what about the uh AFC North? It's Baltimore's, right? Yeah, two games up on Pittsburgh and Cleveland. The Dolphins in the Dolphins East. Two games up on the Bills. Chiefs are two games yeah. up on the Broncos. And now the Jaguars are two games up on the Texans, yep. right? That's it. Yeah. Week 13, we already know. <laughs> the playoffs right. are going to be so much for parity, right? <laughs> we figured out. It's it's often too the best quarterback in the best division. It's not very hard to pick division no. winners sometimes. Uh and it's not very hard for us to pick some winners. You're doing great in the NFL. Let's keep yeah, this yeah, going. We're a little above 500. We, it's been, we, we were better, but last week was... Well, let's get back on track. We're going to try. So, for those who are new, welcome. For those who have been here, you know how this works. Bear has picks now for the NFL. We'll get to give in group chat. We'll do Survivor and we'll do our best bets. So, right now, Bear's first game that he likes, Cincinnati Bengals at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars are favored by nine. Bengals are five and six overall. They're four, six, and one against the spread. Lost Steelers last weekend without Joe Burrow out for the season. Just had a uh, wrist uh, surgery. Hope he's uh, well for next season. Jaguars eight and three overall and against the spread. They just beat the red hot Houston Texans in Houston. Bear, where are we going here? I know the Bengals are going nowhere now with Brownie, a quarterback, and in playoffs are a dream. But despite the defense not being what it was last, like it's still a prideful enough unit. I think to keep them in the game, I think Browning, he was fine uh, against Pittsburgh. He's not, he obviously he's not Joe Burrow, but, but look, the Steelers defense last week, he, he was, he was okay in that game. They easily could have won that game. Now you're going up against Jacksonville. I think it's a better matchup for them. Nine just feels like too many. Do I think they're going to go there and win? No, but, but, but it's nearly double digits. I'll, I'll take the Bengals here. Yeah. J- Jacksonville's offense has, just not been clicking right. No. Um, the one the one concern I have for Bengals is I I was on the Bengals. I think you were last weekend as well against Pittsburgh. Maybe you weren't. No, right? I was not. But I thought the Bengals were going to have that sort of that one game bounce with the backup quarterback. Mm-hmm. Where just the first game that back, the first game of like just we're going to play really well with Jake Brown, and they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. And that's the concern about this game is like, can they? Are they just a dead man walking franchise right now, knowing that? Everything they want to accomplish is now done for the season. Not win the North, not going to be a playoff team. And sort of this, they, their, their, their growth as a team was blunted this year with the, with the Burrow injury. But I, Jackson, thought, but I thought Jack- the Jets could have been that one, one game balance. The locker room would have been ecstatic that Tim Boyle was starting and not Zach Wilson. And the same thing with the, I thought like, that, I thought the Patriots were going to start someone else other yeah. than Mac Jones. And Well, the Hail Mary was almost got the team fired up for the Jets. <laughs> that was, hey, I someone on national radio. I'm not going to say who it was or the network had like a take and like saying, like, I, I was like astounded at what they said about that. Like his take was that the fact that was Xavier Howard who ran it back. Is that what it was? No, it was Javon Holland. Javon Holland. Oh, that's right. yeah. Duck. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm, that, that showed how selfish and like stat driven the dolphins were that the first thing he thought of was intercepting the ball and running it back for a touchdown that the first thing he should have thought of was just knocking it down. And I was like, huh? I'm like, they, they, you had an opportunity to make, get an interception and make a, 
total game and momentum changing play after two hit thrown, I think interceptions on two consecutive plays in a game that you should have been up like 17 points was going to be a one score game going into the locker room. And you had a chance to completely change them. But, but you, the first is should be knock it down and not try and make the, I was like, <laughs> one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Yes. Not surprising. Um, so you have the Bengals here plus nine to start out the day. The next wager is going to be Arizona at Pittsburgh. Pick Steelers favored by five and a half. Might get to six at some point. Oops. But Arizona is two and ten overall, six and six against the spread. So they're, they're covering games. Steelers are seven and four straight up and against the spread. Bear, what do we got here? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my nose. And I'm going to take the Cardinals plus the yes, points here. as you should. I'm hoping it gets to six for everybody out there, so you might want to wait. It's probably headed that way. Look, they were awful last week. They were terrible. Uh, they scored 16 and 14 points the last couple of weeks. Um, it's hard to lay points with the Steelers. Usually you're not laying close to a touchdown, but I think that's going to be a rare spot. But And we joke about it on the, uh, the gambling group chat, like, Every Steelers game is kind of like every Chargers game. It's going to be close. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be low scoring. And, and I think um, I think this will be close. I think it will be ugly. It will be low scoring. And that leads me to uh, take the Arizona Cardinals plus a six. Just don't win the game. Because I yeah. have that Arizona under three and a half. Win well, five and a half for now. Three, three and a half that I need to, yeah. uh, need, need, need to catch that ticket as well. So nice Mike Tomlin, coach of the year ticket. Yeah. So. Yeah, just do enough to cover the number. Why is it that some coaches, I should be able to answer this question, but I don't know. Like Mike Tomlin is a big favorite, and this is not big per se, but the NFL five and a half is a good number. Like they're just bad as favorites, man. I don't yep. know what it is. The team gets overconfident or they don't, it's just odd to me. I, I don't, I, I don't and get I why. I think it's the makeup of the team that they're really not, they're kind of built to be like an underdog who can, Kind of just ugly, hang around an ugly game, ugly it up. And when you're a five and a half point favorite, you ugly it up and Arizona right, and you, covers. You're keeping them in the game. Yeah. Arizona, look, Arizona's feisty, man. They, they, they got their butts whooped by the Rams last weekend, but they're they're feisty enough to keep in this game. Plus, Steelers, five and a half point favorite. Like, what are we doing? I, it, it, it just Get the six for me, please. Yeah. Hopefully, the six will be there at some point. So, to recap, Bear has the Bengals plus nine at Jacksonville. That's a Monday night football game, correct? It is. Monday night football game. And you have Arizona plus the five and a half. Maybe gets to six at some point, but five and a half for now against the Steelers this weekend. Uh, we will cover all the NFL action. We'll talk MVP. We'll talk coach of the year. We'll talk some fun parlays you might be able to make in the NFL. We got Will's favorite teaser. We have all that. The gambling group chat. It's going to be Will Hill, Sammy P, myself, and the bear right here. Here is the NFL gambling group chat. Gambling group chat is back with Sammy, Will Hill, and my co-host, Jeff Schwartz. I guess we may as well just start with the biggest game of the week, San Francisco at Philly. Uh, Niners taking all the money. There are threes in most places now, 47 and a half. Um, MVP may be at stake. Uh, home field in the playoffs may be at stake. Uh, Super Bowl, uh, so much at stake here. Will, I haven't heard one person make the case for the Eagles yet. Will you? You're not going to hear one here. I like San Francisco. Now I'm not crazy about laying three. There was, you know, one and a half all the way up to two and a half that you missed the boat. So maybe you just you play a cheaper money line that the cheapest money line you can find. So you don't sort of middle yourself here, side yourself. Uh, I just think this is a great spot for San Francisco extra rest. They didn't play uh, since Thanksgiving. And that was a ho-hum game where they basically just took the foot off the gas the entire second half. So they have 10 days off. Meanwhile, uh, Philly played Monday night against Kansas city, Thanksgiving week down to the wire. Then they play the bills basically play a fifth quarter that goes down to the wire. Uh, they get all banged up. They play almost a hundred plays on defense. And now you're going to turn around and, and play San Francisco. Who's rested. Who's out for blood playoff revenge uh, after last year. And, I just hope we see a fair fight. I mean, last year, Purdy got hurt, and I know people say, oh, you know, Philly would have won anyway. We have no idea what would have happened. San Francisco was a good team. They are a good team. Uh, I think San Francisco gets it done here. Sammy, any thoughts? I've tried to take Philly out the last two weeks, and it hasn't gone well. I'm like a wounded <laughs> animal right now. I mean, <laughs> Kansas City was better for three yeah. quarters. Eagles win. Buffalo was better for maybe four quarters. Eagles win. Um, it's tough to step in front of a team that not only has one loss, but 
keeps finding ways to cover. They are 8-1-2 and two at the window. Not only are they the best regular season record team, they are the best cover team in the league. I want to go against them again, but I might be living under a bridge. I just, I, I want to say this, though. Is Jalen Hurts, as good as he's been in the last three weeks, is he really the MVP of the NFL right now? I know he's the betting favorite. No. No. What are we talking about? He's not the best player in football right now. He's the quarterback of the best team. And I think this is the new age voting of the MVP. We're just going to give it to the most important player, wink, wink, the quarterback on the best team. I just, I can't wrap my hands around Jalen Hurts being a $2 favorite to win the MVP. I, I just don't get it. Well, well, here's what I would do, Sammy, if I were you, because I know Will and I, we've, I think we've all talked about it on there, like, Brock Purdy at 14 to one or 16 to one, whatever he is now for MVP. I think if you like the Niners here, I think you just play Purdy to win MVP because in order for him to win the MVP, they need to win in Philly. If they do, if they don't win in Philly, he's not winning the MVP, but if they win, you're going to see this number get absolutely slashed. And then that opens up a lot of opportunities, but I think that's the way to potentially play this because I think if the, the Niners win here, you're looking at a team that's probably going to go 13 and four, 14 and three, uh, if, if they can win out and, uh, and he probably will, but, but, but you're right. It's, it's turned into a default quarterback award, a quarterback on a number one or a number two seed has had a great year. You got to go back. What, what was it? 2012 when Adrian Peterson, yes. I think won it. Yeah. And he's the last non quarterback to win it. So while I think we all think that Tyree kill is well deserving of the MVP and there are other players who are probably deserving of the MVP. It probably will go to, uh, and another quarterback. I, I wanted to go back to what, what you've been both been mentioning about the, the Eagles and what, 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 what Sammy said, and then talk to you about this, Jeff. Because if you look at the Eagles game and you talk about the extra rest that the Niners have, uh, playing the overtime game against the Bills, the Monday night game on a short week against the Chiefs, the emotional rivalry game against the Cowboys that you probably should have lost as well. Like, is the we we talk about it when we handicap these games yeah. about spots and perfect time, perfect situation, like cumulative effect of all those games. Is that real or is that just yes. bullshit that we make up? I think it's real during the regular season. I mean, obviously, when when it comes playoff time, there's a different energy, and so you're able to withstand sort of that. But this is the the Eagles have played very physical games now for weeks on end. The Niners are well rested. That that doesn't matter. They have extra rest. They play on Thanksgiving. They have more rest. Um, and you know. When you have a team like the Eagles that have older players, especially in the offense defensive lines, I think it does matter to have less rest and play more physical games. And it's not, look, mentally, they're going to be perfectly prepared for this game. They're not going to not be prepared. But as the season gets longer, you sort of those bumps and bruises get a little bit tougher to rehab when you have games where you keep having to be very violent and physical and kind of win the game on the on the backs of your offensive defensive line. So I do think it does matter in this game because the thing about it, when you're the Eagles too, you get everyone's best shot. And now you get the Niners who feel like they should have beaten you, you know, what, what, six months ago, seven, eight months ago. They're rested. They're healthy. I like the Niners' first half, guys. I think Niners come out with a very scripted game plan, get on track very early. And then to Sammy's point, the Eagles just find a way to win. The Eagles in the second half of games have played much better than the first half of games, right? So I think to me, at least recently they have, obviously. Uh, I think to me, Niners' first half is the way to play. Even maybe Niners' first quarter, just the way they come out in this game, fresh, Prepared. I'm sure that Kyle Shanahan and staff has thought, have thought about this game now, Bear, for months on end. They've game planned this game for months on end. They're going to have a great plan early in the game, and we'll see if the Eagles can adjust to what the Niners can do. So I think Niners' first half is a way to play this one. The, 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 the other game, which I, I think is kind of interesting this week, and now uh, Monday night, the Bengals go to Jacksonville. Like The Jaguar is up to nine now. It feels like kind of a dangerous game for me. The Jags getting that win uh, in, in Houston last week. Uh, a lot of people talking about them potentially as the number one seed in the AFC. No. I don't want to lay nine with, with Jacksonville here. Do, do you, Sammy? No, I like under. You can go under 38. I think it's going to keep crawling. And not just because, you know, Sunday and Monday night unders are on a 23-3 and three run. Which is absurd. Primetime under. Absurd. Sammy, Sammy, Prime following time under. Sammy, just following the trend. Sammy's the bartender. Just again. Following trends. That's it's it. No handicapping guy. involved. Trend guy. I walked right into that. 
I will own it. Jacksonville's <laughs> defense is better than Jacksonville's offense. We've chronicled this for a month on Bear Bets. Their D yeah. is way better than their O. And, you know, Cincinnati without Joe Burrow is like college game day without the Bear. It's just not the same. <laughs> Jake Browning at quarterback doesn't doesn't move my meter, guys. It's just it's not an offense that can hit the home run plays. When you can hit home run plays to Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and your quarterback is also – mobile and able to throw on the run your offense can do anything it wants when you have jake browning under center you lose all of the versatility this is a 20 to 17 at max you know 20 to 10 cincinnati's not going to score yeah. and jacksonville's defense is very very good I, I jack, saw jake browning me. and joe burrow both played in the college football playoff i well, saw a difference i saw a stat there were PFF ranked the supporting cast for every quarterback mm-hmm. or really every team, like outside of quarterback. And right? Jacksonville was in the bottom five on offense. Like they, they just don't, they're not giving Trevor Lawrence. He's, and he's had issues himself. Sometimes you're like, they're just not giving the support around the quarterback with the offensive line, the wide receivers that we think watching them play football, they should have. And it hurts their offense. That's why their offense is not as highly rated as other offenses. So I think the point about, do they cover this number? Is the under the, the 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 way to go? This is now a trend. I mean, it's not really a trend. It's what Jacksonville is this season. Offensively, they're just not sort of whole. But to Sammy's point, defensively, they're, they're playing really good football. They played well against C.J. Stroud this past weekend. Possibly the, you know, the hottest offense in the NFL, the way MVP, Stroud's been playing. They play MVP well. of the league, C.J. Stroud. MVP of the league, yep. Yeah, after that Panthers loss like a month ago. MVP. Since he's got to be a little demoralized too. Two years ago, they're a play away from winning the Super Bowl. Last year, they're a play from going back to the Super Bowl. Now they're five and six with a backup quarterback just playing out their string. That you know their, their season's over. So it'd be Jacksonville or nothing. I think Jacksonville's a great teaser leg. I know Bear, we were texting the other night. Like sometimes teasers are just the best way to play. I know you don't play them uh, very often, but to yeah. me, you, you throw this in like a six and a half team teaser. You just get it down to the two and a half, and you, you put it in your pocket and say, hey, if you beat me, you beat me. But uh, it would be Jags or nothing. But just as an aside, Jags might be the most confusing team in the league to me. Are are they contenders? Are they really good? Are they okay? They just beat up on a bad division week to week. I changed my mind on them. Is Lawrence really good? Is he just, a, is he a little overrated? I can't get a feel. I don't know if you guys have some strong opinion on Jacksonville. Um, I, you know, there's a, a path here where they still could get the one seed, I guess at eight and three and a, a reasonable schedule. I just, I can't put, I can't wrap my arms around the Jags. They're like the Clippers. They're the Clippers okay. of the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've actually made a conference championship game though. So not not quite. Um, the Clippers didn't the Clippers make the, uh, the Clippers have never made yeah, the Western Conference Finals. A couple years ago, a couple years ago, yeah, they, they did when Kawhi got hurt. Yeah, that was that was that was that's what I was thinking. I mean, I'm a big I'm a Phoenix. big NBA guy, so I, I remember that. Yeah, Clippers did in the Western right. Conference Finals two years ago. I thought, ago, I thought, I thought they made it to like the second round. Um, nonetheless, uh, the Jacksonville. No, you're NBA. Was, damn it, or I'll sit off I know. the show. I, I just know my one Clipper fact because I just they're just irrelevant in Los Angeles. It was nice as a kid though. Go to the sports arena. You could pay like eight dollars and sit in the fourth row. We did that a lot as a family. We used to have our our production office in the in the clip joint in the sports arena. What an absolute dump! <laughs> what a bad, what a bad oh. place to watch. Oh, what a terrible oh, building. What 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 is Mahomes for MVP Michael right now? Candy. By the way, because oh, I dude, I saw a lot of bad basketball. In the sports arena, but it Ron was Harper, cheap, man. Ron Harper. It was it was cheap, and my, it was easily affordable. You could go to the games. It was awesome. Um, for MVP, by the way, if Rashi Rice can catch a football for the Chiefs, Mahomes is going to win the MVP again, right? Like if if they can just Willie, really? who's going to win? If they're the one seed, who's going to win? Who's going to win? Brock Purdy over him, Jalen Hurts over Mahomes. If if, if Rashi Rice can catch a football as he did last weekend, the Chiefs' offense is normal again. Wouldn't he win the MVP again if they end up winning? I'm not saying he's deserving of it, but he's going to. They're going to be the one seed most likely again. I can't look up Jackson. awards prices here in New York, in New York City. Awful. He's uh, seven, to is, two. I think, I, seven to two on Mahomes. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, you've had better numbers earlier in the season. I was just curious the what if, if number just keeps dropping and dropping. Towards. But that doesn't that don't they have to win the division in order I for him so. to win MVP? I don't, yeah. Yes, I I get it. Yeah. If you took like, him thirty-five, their to schedule one. gets tough. Yeah, it does. Like it was 35 to one a couple okay, weeks ago. If, if, I get that, but it's seven to one. I don't know. No. Okay. Let's throw out like the idea of best quarterback on best team wins. Who would you guys vote for the MVP right now? If if, if you if you just like, we're not voting for the best. Like, who is the Oof. MVP right now? Is it Tyreek Hill? Is it Miles Garrett? Like, is I'd it vote for who Mahomes. is the MVP of the 
I'm just saying, like, I, I, I think we, 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 and I'm with you guys on some years when it's like we just give it to the best quarterback no matter what. There were years which I thought J.J. Watt should have won it. Aaron Donald had a chance to win. Like, I think those guys in some years when they get 22 sacks, like they're, they're impacting a game in a way that we can't really quantify at times. Um, they wouldn't say that. People are like, who is the actual MVP but, this year? What, what, what if you put Patrick Mahomes' name next to Brock Purdy's stats? Well put. Probably unanimous MVP. What, what are, probably, yeah. Good point, actually. I, I think my home stats would get, get better excited. if she writes and catch a football. Well, if, oh, for the Brock Purdy hit, you're gonna hit the Brock Purdy one. I mean, are, are, again, like, is is are the Niners gonna is he gonna win the MVP if they're not the one seed? Because they're two back of the Eagles right now. Right? They have to beat the Eagles, but that that's the thing. If they beat the Eagles this week, I think he I think he has an excellent path to win because I think then you're looking at maybe the Eagles lose next week in Dallas, and then you're exactly. looking at maybe a couple of. I, I, sure. Then, yeah. Then, then, there, then there's think, a path. I don't trust You're the Cowboys to beat the Eagles, though. So I don't. That's like not. You don't trust the Cowboys? Why no, not? never. <laughs> never trust. Never trust where. All right. So speaking of teasers, Will, I'm I'm looking at these games right here. I'm trying to figure out what will America's teaser be on Sunday. Like, are, I don't know if people will tease Green Kansas City down to just win. In Green Bay, like I don't think that's it. Um, probably may you, may, I'm gonna maybe Ten- Tennessee out to seven for sure. I would put Tennessee out to seven. Tampa, you can't TLETs Tampa. Maybe knowing that Kyle Trask might play for Tampa, like I'm Steelers down. Steelers down is absolutely going to be one leg for sure. Are we Eagles sure? Up. What about Eagles up? Eagles up. Eagles up might be the way to go. Eagles and Titans. Titans getting seven points at home as a Vrabel as an underdog against against who? It's against or or, the, or the Jacksonville down to two and a half under under the field goal. I I, I think Steelers down and Jags down. I think those will. Uh, I think th- those will be the two popular ones. But again, I'm not. I'm not a teaser guy. Well, what, what, what do you think? You you you. What, you honestly, I'm not, I'm not giving you a hard time or busting your chops. Like you like follow this like religiously. Like you you dial in to like figure out your best teaser combinations all week like, like what are you thinking right now for a two-teamer i actually don't i just look at the ones that are one and a half two-point dogs and i take them up to eight and a half because it's the nfl in 2023 all these games are close they're all low scoring nobody gets away with mar no nobody wins going away like the steelers but anytime they're in a game or, or a good teaser like they don't all hit like the browns last week against denver uh denver pulls away but uh, i agree with jeff you get yep. the titans up to seven and a half you shop around and, and you know there's some one and a halfs i think out there um, that that's a good one. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, people are going to be listening to this on Friday. I'm sure there's plenty of Cowboys Jags teasers because Cowboys opened eight and a half. So, so Titans are a good leg. Um, I, I, chiefs are a good leg too. That, I mean, that's a prime time. People are going to want to bet the chiefs to just win the game against green Bay. I know love has looked better here, but a uh, chiefs Jags one makes sense. So de- definitely a different, different combinations. But when you go through the six and the three, and especially when you tease the dogs up, which I don't know if a lot of people like to do. Um, you just, man, the, the, all these games are so close and solo scoring. Those points are extremely valuable. You don't have to sit there and sweat out the coin flip, but who's going to win, who's going to make a kick, miss a kick. You just, you have those points in your back pocket. It's a lot better feeling. You, you go down this list of games this week and, and like, there are so many that like Chargers Patriots. I want no oh, part of so Jets oh. Falcons. I want no part wait, wait, of, wait, but do you want part of Aaron Rodgers leading your jets back at the week 15, oh, 16, but, 17 this year? Look, to, 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 there, to isn't, there isn't a doctor alive. That's going to clear him to play. Are we sure he's even in, using in, the doctor? In, in, in an NFL he's the doctor. Game. He's the doctor though. That that's the point. It's he's his own doctor. And why in the, unless he's got some ridiculous contract incentive, why would you want to play behind that offensive line right now? To like, prove like, that he's that he's smarter than everyone else. Like, that he, there, that he there is that, he's not coming back. And, and like I've seen a, a sports book out there, like post Will Allen Rogers play again with a yes price. Please post a no, please. There, but you. There, I'm dying but, to bet the no on this. There, they posted a video of him in slow motion during individual drills mm-hmm. yesterday. He's back to 100. percent Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's going to lead your Jets to the, the promised land at the year. end of the season. And next then into year. next season, you have the hype is going to be back on Aaron Rodgers. Next time I see him actively playing on a football Will field, said he was I, I want to see will be will be next will be next July during uh, 
during preseason football. Will said he he laid money on him to be comeback player of the year. That I did not say that. <laughs> comeback player of the year, that number is dropping and dropping. People can't get enough. Aaron Rodgers, comeback player of the year. You wonder how these, you know, you go to Vegas and there's these tall buildings. You wonder why these sports books always win. That's why people bet Aaron Rodgers, comeback player of the year. Enough. He's not playing. Stop. It would be the greatest people, comeback, people... though, since like ancient Greece. I mean, this would be biblical, right? If he actually <laughs> does come back, the recovery time. I mean, does he just have no care about his his future? That leg is going to look like a leg of lamb, like when it comes off the spit. It's not just going to fall off the bone, right? Like, like Jeff and I were talking about this on the way up. Like Cam Akers came back in like what five, five and a half months or something like that, and like that's like record set. Like he was twenty two years old. Like, and then he just tore the other. So like the recurrence of an injury or injuring the other. Like we we have a Gil Alexander. We we know he's ruptured both Achilles tendons because the other he overcompensated and the other the other one happened. So like it's so idiotic to like. Pe- is Aaron? He's no, he's not playing. He's playing just to make you as a Jets fan excited for next season. No, I'm, I'll be, I'll be excited about, you know, I'm not going to be excited about next season because I was far too excited about this, this season. And I knew what was going to happen. And it oh, happened God. four plays. This is what, this is why he texts us all negative all the time. He's a Jets fan. Correct. Yeah, it is. that's true. Correct. That's true. We're getting to the roots of it. Bear, do you have a feel though for the Jets? Is there somebody in the building that's just going to look at him and say, Hey, no, this isn't happening. We're not doing this. Is there an adult in the room to just put their foot down? Like, Hey, get this idea out of your head. Hopefully We're not doing this. Is hopefully stupid. the doctor it's not, it's hope, not happening. Hopefully yeah. the doctor. Well, Hopefully the doctor and, and the and, and, and the surgeon who, well, who did the surgery. I'll just say, if they let him practice, they do think that he can play at some point. I mean, they, I mean, not play per se this year, but like they think he's good enough to practice. Like they're not going to clear him to practice, Bear, if he's if it's not healed enough to practice. I don't think the Jets haven't had an adult in the room since Bill Parcells was there. So why 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 are we going? Why is it going to change now? I, I do think from the the perspective of the head coach in the situation and the general manager, they're on the hot seat right now. And if Rodgers can come back and play a game or two and they win those games and he looks good, it certainly saves their job. Now, of course, another risk of that is getting hurt again and then he's out for some more extended time next season and your job is over anyways. But I think there's part of it to where, like, the Jets coach is probably hoping he comes back to get a couple games of him in um, to say, look, see, here's proof of concept. Here's what we wanted to do, and we're doing it now at least for the, for the last couple weeks of the season. Speaking of somebody that did come back from an injury, uh, Kyler Murray. I'm hoping I can get six with the uh, with the Cardinals this week. I like pick every pick, we, we joke about the Chargers. Every Chargers game the same. Every Steelers game is the same as well. Gross, yeah. ugly, low scoring. Fourth quarter, find a way to win. Uh, I, I, I'll take Arizona plus five and a half, but I'm hoping I can get a uh, a six here. Sam, you got any any uh, any thoughts? And a total of forty one on this one as well. I'll be heads up with you. You know, it's so good that they brought Kyler Murray back a couple weeks ago to get that <laughs> second win of the season. Now they're two and 10. <laughs> Maybe you win another game. You don't pick first overall. Just brilliant, brilliant game planning, <laughs> brilliant organizational structure. What they just got pantsed by the Rams. And I look, I know that laying points with the Steelers is not something that we all want to do on a weekly basis. And it, really doesn't happen because they're not laying numbers like this four five six but the sharps slammed pittsburgh they hit them at three and a half really? four four and a half now we're in that dead zone now at five and a half you might get six i think it's going there um it's an expensive five and a half offshore right now this could all change obviously by sunday but my concern just stylistically is how does arizona score um maybe they pi themselves down the field and get a bunch of deep balls but i <laughs> I think Pittsburgh's defense is going to just suffocate Arizona, and the little guy is going to have a really tough outing. I just, if I'm Arizona now, do I even care? I'm two and ten. Do, do my players care? I know my coach cares because he's a rookie head coach, but I wouldn't bet Arizona here. They suck. Well, I think our well, Arizona w- 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 win total is probably going to be safe here. Yeah, I'm on it. Nine, Niners, Eagles. But... Let's not count our money. <laughs> They went. They uh, went in but, twice. They basically. They basically are going to have to beat the Steelers this week. Two, two or three. They get Steelers, they Bears, get and Seahawks. Seahawks. They got to win two of those three to get to four. Feel a lot better if uh, I, if I just Pittsburgh like, wins this week. 
I will too. I just find it so so funny with the Steelers fans how much rejoice there was in the community for 400 yards on offense last week. <laughs> I didn't even know that that was a thing. They, got, they hadn't reached 400 yards of offense in 58 games. Like, not like, not once, not, not by happenstance. They played, how many overtime games have they played the last three years, Bear? And they didn't happen to stumble into 400 yards. And they did it in a game where they easily could have lost this past week in the Bengals, too. 400 yards on offense is the bar for the Steelers. I love it, but but will this does this game does bring into another another wager that that you made, and I'll, I'll let you give it out. But I, I know you said it uh, a, a couple of times. But if the Steelers do wind up winning this week, it 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 brings Tomlin Coach of the Year really into play. Sure, and, and again, I'm with you on Arizona here. Tomlin's good as a dog. He's good off a loss, but he here he's a favorite and he's off a win. So to me, this is like 20 to 17. That's every Steelers win is 20 to 17. So um, I, I think this the points are good here, but I still think Tomlin, the coach of the year, is much like the MVP. They're both wide open. They're both a lot of candidates, a lot of moving parts here. There's a lot to be decided in this last uh, portion of the season. It, it, I think if Pittsburgh gets in, and Houston gets in, it'll be fascinating. I think Ryan's and Tomlin should be the two favorites. I don't buy the Dan Campbell stuff at all. I don't Tomlin's either. never won this award. It's a, sort of a lifetime achievement deal. He's almost the star of the team where there's no talent on the team. So if he gets in the playoffs, look, they're, they're probably going to the playoffs. They get Cincy again. They get a winnable game this week. They get the Patriots. And by the way, we get the Patriots, I think, three times in primetime in December. How lucky are we? Uh, I think no, Tomlin we don't. has missed no, we don't. 12 to 1. I think we do. A Thursday night, a Monday night, and a Sunday night, I think. But to, to me, Tomlin at, at, at uh, 12 to 1 is a good bet. And there's a book out there that lets you parlay awards. I bet Purdy MVP parlayed with Tomlin Coach of the Year. Uh, wow. 254 to 1. That's a, that's going to be a fun one. Wow. I, I, I might have ridden your coattails on that one as well. So we're, we we are definitely rooting. For I, I missed that text message for that, that bet. You can't Thanks. do it. You can't do it anyway. You actually, it. actually, you could you can do it here. Well, I'm here I, right now. I got to do it. I didn't want to get scolded. To I know how you okay. feel about Purdy. You're going to say mean things. If I tell you anything, Purdy MVP, you start to say mean things. So that's why I don't think you got that message. That is, that is fair, though. You, yeah, that is fair. I do like making money, though. So I'm, I'm, in, I, that that offsets some of my Purdy hate sometimes. Oh yeah. Per, per, oh, so we're lucky. Yeah. Oh, Patriots at Broncos, the Christmas Eve game. Merry Christmas. Patriots versus Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. Bah humbug. Oh, the, the, the Pats have three state, three straight primetime games coming at up. Steelers. <laughs> disgusting, gr gross offense. Well, what, what's the Patriots team total going to be there? Patriots versus Chiefs. Patriots at Broncos. I'm just excited to get the text message from Sammy with two minutes left in the Patriots uh, Chargers game this weekend that shows the score within three points on either side. But, but, this, so game, this game, <laughs> how, how is this total? Like, you can still get 41 out there. Like, who's scoring points in this game, Sammy? Bailey Zappi? I can't That's even what we say it last week. And sorry. I, I know that was a joke. I tried to get through it. I lasted like two seconds. It's okay. Um, this is the unbettable football game. I'm looking at the board right now and I'm thinking to myself, like, all right, if you were going to remember the, uh, the Pepsi challenge when it was Coke against Pepsi, if you gave mm -hmm. me the, the chargers in one shot glass, the Patriots in the second and bleach in the third, I might take the bleach <laughs> rather than bet this game. It is so bad. I mean, the Patriots have no offense. Their defense is banged up, battered with injuries. The coach is on the way out. He's lost the locker room. But then you've got the immovable object, the Chargers as a favorite. Uh, you know, you ask Chris <laughs> Andrews or Ed Sammons or John Murray or Chris Bennett, you know, the wise guys in Vegas for years have taken the Chargers as dogs and faded them as favorites. So I will take the bleach. I stand by that in this one. In, in 20, we were joking about Arizona before about like not picking one. Not only could they not pick one, they might not pick two. And I was like, Carolina, Carolina, like if they win another game this year, I'd be surprised. And then New England, they finished like, is this just like a, that actually brings a good question. Like, do you think Belichick is gone or is this just like this Robert Kraft, Bill Belichick master plan tank job to be able to take whoever is there at number two, Drake May or Caleb Williams? How do you let a guy like that who can't put together an offense without Brady take another quarterback? I just, I mean, he's the greatest I, like, coach we've yeah. ever seen in the NFL, but I, 
I mean, that would be malpractice if you let Bill Belichick try and develop another quarterback. You know, he had Brady for two decades. It worked really, really well. They won a lot of championships. They have a whole bunch of jewelry. But then, you know, the Cam Newton thing went completely sideways, and that was his decision to bring in Cam. I still don't know who liked Mac, whether it was Kraft or Bill, but they've put nothing around Mac Jones. They've ruined Mac Jones. He had a really good rookie year, and then he's he, been he awful the last two years. Do you have any faith in Bill developing Caleb Williams or Drake May? It, it's hard to watch no. the Patriots no. offense the last three years with a special teams coordinator and a defensive coordinator <laughs> running your <laughs> offense. I I wouldn't do it. And that's nothing against what Bill has done, but the last four years are telling, very telling how bad this offense has gotten. I would put money on Belichick being the next Panthers head coach. I bet David Tepper just swings for the fences and just like, he's like, uh, you know what? Belichick, like I'm, I'm hiring Belichick. We're, we're cleaning things up around here. That he's going to be at his age. He's going to go build, rebuild that team with no picks from the. I mean, like what Tepper seems like the guy that's going to take a swing like that. Isn't he? Yeah. But like kidding aside, like it's, not a job that it's anybody a terrible would job. want. It's a terrible You've got job. no picks in Bryce Young, who might not be able to play. It's a terrible job, but who? But I'm telling you, Tepper's going to try to swing for the fences. He's done like the Frank Reich and the Matt Rule thing. He'll try to bring an established veteran coach who has a track record of winning. Obviously, and that's Belichick, and he's unlimited money. It doesn't matter. The money to him is whatever. He'll pay for a coach. I would. I would put some money on that. I think Bel- what, be what motivates it's Belichick at this point is it the, is it another big paycheck or is it hey I want to win one without Brady and he's smart enough obviously to know he needs a quarterback can he find his way to the Chargers that's the one just as like a neutral fan I want I kind of want to see Herbert with, with with Belichick Belichick with Herbert I, I, you know but Herbert they do him well, no favors I, I, I there think, I, yeah that's yeah, yeah, yeah but you can't fit. let this here's the thing about it is is like you can't let personnel. Belichick in my opinion have control personnel. And I like, agree. if he goes to Carolina, maybe Tepper's like, you can do anything you want in San, in San Diego, in Los Angeles. If you hire him there, Harbaugh's you, going you, you have Harbaugh's to let, Harbaugh's going to the you have, I think he, Harbaugh's going there too, but you, you can't, wherever he goes, in my opinion, I think he can still coach, but he can't, he can't be sure to personnel. Like that's, a, that's just a no. And so wherever he goes next year, if he even coaches anywhere, I think he'd be great in the booth or everyone wants to do, uh, you know, he was great whenever he did that NFL 100 thing, like but you can't let it be in charge of personnel. You say, no, no, you can coach and we'll let, we'll be in charge of players. And if he agrees to that, then great. But if he doesn't, then he just won't coach. So he's so what he's what? 16 behind Shula. That's like three years. Three, yeah. Hey, on a decent team on the Patriots, yeah. it might be 16 years. Like that's four years. In that's Carolina. Pro- that's, pro- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's yeah, probably yeah. what he wants. But, Two years with the Chargers, hmm. he'd win. He'd win nine or ten games with the Chargers. Now you said bear, bear Harbaugh to the Chargers. You made it seem like is that? Uh, are there whispers about that? Is that sort of the? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, I, the I, 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 yes, yeah. They, I think I think that's out there. I, I Everyone's think going to want that job though. Like that job's every every correct. coach. You're, you're, you're going to want, want Herbert. You're going to want some yeah. of the guys that they have on defense. You're going to. Sure. I mean, you're in a division with with the Chiefs, but I mean that's that that that's fine. It, it, people talk about Harbaugh in. in I think that, I mean, Bruce Feldman reported on it a couple of weeks ago. Like he's going to be like he's going to be suspended for a good part of 2024. That's the yeah. That, that's the thought process. Like he he'll be he'll be gone next I mean, year. Who the Michigan job? I mean, I would th- I would think Sh- Sharon Moore, Moore is it, is, yeah. is, is, is auditioning for it right now. He's four and zero. Oh. Yeah, and he did <laughs> and did it. He's done yeah. winning win a couple of games. But I, I think I think people are going to connect Harbaugh to the Bears just because he played there. But I mean, I, I do think you need to. I mean, I don't know what the relationship is or was, but now Kevin Warren, he used to lead up the Big Ten. Yeah. He's now with the Bears. Yeah. So, like, I don't know what the Harbaugh, but Kevin Warren relationship is. is. Is there one? Is it good? Is it bad? That could come could come into play. But I think Harbaugh, uh, California, San Diego already, USD, like, I think that makes sense for him. So I, I think that's where Will that owner pay him. Will that owner give him the money he wants? I think he'll give him. I think he'll give him money, own, yeah. money in control. I, yeah. I think he'll give him personnel as well. So we'll see. But 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 I, I think you're gonna have to here. wait till the end of the year. To, I think I think I, I think that he will wait to the end of the year to fire Staley, and I, I think then Ben Harbaugh will will, will be announced at some point in January, but. 
what do I know? I just, I just, I just, I just try to connect dots and listen to things that smart people say. So I'm not one of them. Well, it's, we're, we're, I'm, 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 I'm going to pause here. Look, I, look, look I think that. he was waiting for one of us to say, like, yeah, you, you're smart, No, no okay. I, 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 I wasn't was waiting for that. So dumb. <laughs> you're so I, smart, I, I, I was waiting for, for – yeah. You're so smart, buddy. I, I, I was waiting for someone to uh, to give me a side on Carolina, Tampa Bay, actually. I thought that's – I like true. Tampa oh. a lot. I, I, I – guys, guys, <laughs> here's the thing. Car- look. Carol, the, this coaching bounce thing is not a real thing. The numbers don't show that. Like, it's about 50% against the spread the game after coach is fired. Guys, Carolina is, like, they're in a very bad place right now. Like, it's a, it got, it's bad, right? Like, they, they didn't only fire, they fired Frank Reich and the quarterback coach, and they're, they don't have enough coaches on their team right now. Uh, like, I, I don't. You should volunteer. Thomas Brown called plays early in the season. It made no difference in the off. They, they, they're not going to the offensive line. They're not good at skill position players. Their defense is not very good. Tampa Bay has Baker Mayfield. I get it. It can be up and down guy, but they do have actual good players on the football team. I, I don't know the motivation for Carolina in this game. I, I don't, I've I been on fading Carolina a bunch this year. It's really paid off because they can't cover any spreads because they stink. I'm not sure the coaching change matters at all here. I don't either. I, th- I think they're a terrible team. I just, I just don't often want to lay <clears throat> close to six points with the, with Tampa, you want you we, we want to lay a point with uh with Indy at Tennessee. I know Will you no. talked about that as a potential uh, teaser leg as well. But the 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 current seventh uh, seven seed in the AFC, Indianapolis Colts. We get back to we get back to Coach of the Year. You talked about Tom before, but if the Colts were to make Steichen's the playoff, you could throw a Steichen, Steichen sure. in there as well. Like, but 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 you're right. I think in that. Campbell just feels like a placeholder. Like, like I think it was Tom Pelissero that every year does that, like that NFL awards confidential by talking to the executives around the league. Like, what do they think is going to happen? I'm, I'm really curious when that piece comes out again. Hopefully, it is Pelissero that got his name right and credit him right, and it will come out again. So I'm really curious to see like what the executive kind of vote would be because I, I think that coach of the year market is, is dead wrong. I, I, I don't, I think after laying that egg on Thanksgiving, I, I think Campbell is not going to win. And um, I, I think Ryan certainly has a shot. I think Tomlin has a shot. And I think Steichen has a shot. I think those would be the, the, the three guys that would, um, would have a chance to win that award. A very quiet season for the Colts. Uh, yeah, I know you want McDaniel for your ticket. I mean, I, look, I, he can't count them out. Um, they were supposed to be good, so I would think he'd have to get to 13, probably 14 wins. But look, uh, he, he's certainly a viable candidate. It's just funny with the Colts, with Steichen. They're just like the quietest little playoff contender. I mean, nobody talks about them. They're just – they're so under the radar. They lost their quarterback, and, you know, and it's just weird to think that's a playoff team. It, it really is. It's just – it's been a, an under-the-radar season. I want to talk about one just more think game. Too, they... uh, can we talk about Detroit and New Orleans? This game, this line makes no sense. This line I thought would be a little higher. You got the Lions off the loss. They're going to be angry, and Dan Campbell's going to be eating drywall. <sighs> Everybody's going to bet the Lions in this spot, right? <laughs> so they open at three, yep. three and a half. Now we're at four. The Saints are two and nine against the spread. The Saints are not a good football team. Yet this line isn't really budging off four. I might have to take the plunge and take my least favorite quarterback, Derek Carr, plus the four. How about this for a stat? The Lions have one win against a team with a winning record. Now, the Saints yeah, aren't oh, a good football yeah. team. But this team, just they just beat a bunch of bums. Look at the first part of the schedule for Detroit. And look at all the garbage on the schedule. The Saints actually play good defense. And the Saints could sort of disrupt the Lions' offense. Could we see the Lions go down again? I think it's very possible this week. And this will be a game that the sports books desperately need the dog to cover because everybody is going to lay the four. They're going to parlay the four. They're going to lay the money line. They're going to parlay the money line. The books need Detroit in the worst way to go down this week. Yeah, I, I could see myself, especially after how ugly this, the Saints have, have been on the offense side of the ball, being on. This is my kind of game. You think you think you think this is a a bartender candidate? The Lions off of Thanksgiving oh, loss is, coming yeah, back. Yeah, this is one A. One, it has to be. Detroit would be one <laughs> for me, and then Chargers would be two. 
I would think. But I, again, it's early. I, I do appreciate all the bartender love. People are like, who's the bartender? He's just very good at being very bad. And uh, he crushed it. He had lions on Thanksgiving. So maybe he goes back to the well for revenge. <laughs> I'm surprised hey, he, to hear he you did get back on that, Sunday. Though. Yeah, he had a nice week. I'm surprised people would be on the lines, though. I don't know if that, if I agree with that. Just because, like, betters are prone to recency bias, and if you lose for me a couple weeks in a row, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be off, and that's how people think. They didn't cover a couple weeks ago against the Bears, and then they screwed everybody's teaser on Thanksgiving. So I don't know. You, you go two weeks without covering. I, I think the shine has come off Detroit a little bit, where it's like they don't cover, they don't cover. All right, I'm gonna go back to them. I don't know if people have that sort of trust level with Detroit, where they're just gonna go back to the well a third time. I'm curious, like the game that I almost bet, and I haven't yet, I, I almost bet the Rams. It, it's up to three and a half, though. I, I guess Garrett's going to be okay. We're probably going to see Flacco. Is he still elite? Uh, but I don't know. I don't know if I'd want, I don't know if I'd want to take the, 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 I definitely couldn't take the Browns here, but I, I don't know if I want to lay three and a half with the Rams either. But I, I do kind of think the Rams are going to win this game, though. That back's a hell of a player. Now you have Cup, you have Kyron Williams, you have Stafford. It was always, hey, you have Cup and you have Stafford. You had a real running back, too. That's, um, I mean, that, that you have a good bet. I'm trying to look for the updated odds for the playoffs. I'm not seeing the Rams here for whatever reason, but that, that gives him a different dimension. He was really impressive. I know that the Cardinals are terrible against the run, but Kyron Williams was super impressive. And you put him with McVay and with all those weapons, that's, uh, that, that's a much improved team, I think. Bears checking the odds for you. I'm checking your odds. Uh, the yes is plus, the yes is still plus two twenty five. Two oh. yes, he two yes, he two twenty five at at, at at FanDuel, which is obviously their their prices are going to be a worse split. But yeah, it's cut cut in half in in, in a week. I'll I, I I got some good uh, if you win this good week, value on that number. That yeah, I, I, that's the thing. If I win the, if I if I win this week and the Seahawks will have lost on on Thursday night in in Dallas, we're going to be we're going to be feeling good because I did I did play uh, Atlanta to make the playoffs as well, and I, and I think Atlanta just by default might actually wind up winning that division. Um, anything else? What we missed? You're shaking your head I'm no good. over here. Oh, I was thinking about I think about the line the wagering on the Falcons Cowboys NFC Wild Card game in Atlanta. What that's going to the number is oh, going to be? I will absolutely have the Falcons in that game. There, yes, there, isn't, exactly. a, there you, isn't a question. You would, you would have to, but you'd have to. You, you, the, the Falcons are my least favorite team to ever wage on in my entire life. Falcons so, plus seven. Sign me up. It's, it's going to be so I'll, I'll, Desmond, I'll, I'll, you're going to be betting be, Desmond Ritter and Arthur Smith. I'll be all, I'll be all <laughs> over it. Falcons plus seven at home against against the, against the Cowboys on January 13th or whatever or whatever the hell it is. Sammy, Will, anything else? Are we good? Dallas had a teaser in that spot, but yeah, that that's going to be the matchup. I'm afraid. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully we will have a a good weekend here. Always fun to to kick this around with you. Let's, be, let's see if we can get one of those uh, nice future prices at home, uh, home for the season as well. Take care, guys. Have a good week. So as we we were kind of joking around with the uh, the bartender there, like the survivor was really put into a uh, a tizzy last week with that Lions loss on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. And then um, Monday night, the the, the fight Josh Dobbs were tur- the, turned into the pumpkin on uh, on Monday night, right? You turn into the pumpkin. You right? turn into the pumpkin, yes. Okay, I, just I think to, so. I want to make sure I got my uh, animated classics right. I think you go from pumpkin like to something good, then back to pumpkin. Okay. Maybe. Yes. Yes. So yeah, that, that, that was yeah. So that, that the, the analogy did work. Yes. I, there I, you I, go. I did get it right. So yeah, <laughs> that Circuit Survivor contest is down to I think seventy something people now. It's a, uh, I think it's, it's somewhere around there. Yeah. But uh, this is this is a hard, this is a hard week because I know I've been talking to a lot of people and you hear a lot of conversation out there like save Jacksonville for the final week, like who they have the final week, the Panthers. Uh-huh. But at the same time, there's no guarantee that that game is going yeah. to mean anything for the for the Jags in terms of seeding. Yes. So like they may not need the game, and while the, while the Panthers are so bad. And they're just going to be in full tank. Well, not going to. And the thing is, it's not even doesn't even matter because they don't have their pick. So, like, if I have Jacksonville available, I'm using them this week. I like I like the Bengals plus the points. Yes, but I don't think they're going to go there and win. So, if you've got Jacksonville, I would yeah. just use them this week because the other options. Well, can can, can, can I give you two other ones? Maybe possibly. You can, you can give me you can give me I, a couple I, of options. Yeah, I, I mean Tampa Bay over Carolina. 
that's one of them, but I will get to my best bet in a few minutes. So we'll talk about this game and Rams over Browns. Is that something you could take the Rams over the Browns? You could do that. Those were not the two obvious ones that I thought people would people, yeah. but, but, but see, that, that's the type of game theory that I think I like here because I would not take the Chargers yeah. over the Patriots. You can't. Oh, do no, that. no, no, please like don't. That, that, please and don't and, and that, then the Steelers over the, over no, the Cardinals. I, I like you, no. you, we talked talk about that. You, 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 that's just going to be a sweat of all sweats. Yes. So I, I could see the Rams. And the other one that I think you could see, which is my best bet, is the Houston Texans minus three and a half against the Denver Broncos. Like, I just don't believe in, in this Denver team. I've, I've been on them and against them a couple of weeks yeah. for mixed, mixed success, but there's just so much turnover luck involved in this five game winning streak. Denver is plus 13 yeah. turnovers. Yeah. Like you're not going to go plus three every single week yes. in turnovers. Like the, the, the Texans have really, I mean, they were in that game last week, could have won that field goal comes up a doink off the, off the cross, off the, uh, the crossbar yeah. like it's a massive swing game for for playoffs for both teams if you look at the texans two with the titans jets browns colts the rest of the way like they win this game they're gonna make the playoffs so i, I like the texans here at home laying the three and a half against denver before we get to my best bet let's recap your two wagers you have the Bengals plus nine and a half the cardinals plus five and a half and then your best bet here Houston minus three and a half. So three NFL wagers for Bear in this podcast. My best bet is fading the Carolina Panthers. I'm thinking Tampa minus five and a half. Dead number, I get it. Um, interesting looking at, at where the num- at where the wagers are at. Every, a lot of people wager on the Panthers this weekend, at least so far, the public is. Um, which, again, there really is not historically a dead cat bounce when your coach gets fired. Um, the, the numbers have shown that straight up against a spread. I think Carolina is just, Bear, they're really freaking bad. And Frank, Frank Reyes hasn't changed the personnel they have. Tampa has not played well lately, but they have better players. And they play hard each week. Baker Mayfield continues to, to like try to move the ball down the field. It's ugly at times. But the Panthers, I think, are just a dead franchise right now. And they're dead inside. They're going to Tampa Bay. They're on the road. Uh, it's, it's, in, it's in a little warmer weather than they're used to right now. I just think Tampa Bay just steamrolls. It's just, it's just, they just steamroll the Panthers in this game. Like, 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 not, surpri- I mean, not surprising. T- Tampa's still sort of playing for something. The Panthers are playing for nothing right now. They don't have their own draft pick. They don't have a head coach. They fired other coaches what a, as well. What a terrible, terrible I think, situation. I think they've covered one game. That was the game they won against the Texans. That's it this season. <laughs> have, the game's not even close. So I've been fading the Panthers each week. I faded them last week as well uh, against the Tennessee Titans. They lost a game 17 10. A game Titans didn't even play that well in. What, so I'm. What, what type of price can we get on? Uh, Next Carolina Panthers head coach Jeff Schwartz. Uh, zero. There's not enough money for that. I make too much money doing this. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't give this up. It's a lot the, more fun. I, I don't know about I, the financial. I, I, I can't reward, give this but, uh, up. Uh, well, you're not making as much as NFL coach doing this. No, I. I you gotta I, talk no, to someone, no, buddy. I imagine that. You gotta talk to someone Stop. about that. Uh, no, no, zero chance I coach, unless unless they let me work like a nine to five. <laughs> like I, just, I show up at nine. I leave at five. I could be the O line coach. Yeah, you say be like a yeah, like a yeah. special special assistant to the offense. I would totally if someone wanted to hire me like to watch film all day and like offensive linemen evaluate them. I'd totally be in on that. That'd be great. And I know there are some places that do like Steve Hutchinson does that for for the Seahawks. Like he's like an offensive line guy for them. He's a, hmm. like they and he evaluates college guys and NFL guys for them. I he's like an official. He's in an official capacity with the Seahawks to do that. I would man. I would be. I'd love to do that. It's a great like deal. That. Yeah, it's a great deal. Yeah. Well, he needs to do a little bit more evaluating on his own offensive line because they have not been very good this year. A little bit hurt. That's true. Abe Lucas is back now. Charles Crossman hurt. Yes, yeah, so that's part of it. Yeah. Injuries, injuries hurt, man. Um, another one in the books. We did it. Right? Yeah. Other, 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 of course, we, we have uh, Super 6 as well this week. We oh, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Good point. It's never too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for week 13. You just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. You can check out Bear's uh, article on the uh, Fox Sports app that will go over Super 6 picks for the week. Back then, just one this week. We had Thanksgiving one last week, and then there were the weekend ones. So yes. Just back to the uh, the normal Super 6 uh, workflow for this week, just the, the one contest. So Love it. How much St. Elmo's are we going to consume this weekend in Indy? Um, Friday night for sure. We'll be taking in the, uh, the Pac-12 championship game. While you get four in order. I think that's right. Yeah. Four, four is probably about all you, cause they're, they're pretty, 
They're pretty girthy. They're they're <laughs> they're, they're, they're 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 a good size. Oh, and then the kids podcast. Um, I uh, yeah. The, well, the, the, the shrimp, the shrimp no, have some girth to them. They they certainly do. Yes. Um, and, they, and 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 the, and the cocktail sauce is spicy. It's very spicy. Yes. The word girth. We have girth toss. The word girth is just funny. It just it's a it's one of those words. It just it just. You know, Your mind is it, dirty, it, Jeff. It triggers some laughter. In my Your mind. mind is in the gutter. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take it over from here and just bid adieu to, to my co-host who has officially lost himself now because of a, a word in the dictionary. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, Will. Thank you to you, the listener and the viewer who take us in on the uh, YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple, wherever you consume all of your podcasts. We appreciate it. Check us out on that YouTube page as well. You get, you'll get to see Jeff making a fool of himself right now. Check out our pretty graphics that our awesome production team has. Good job, yes. For Jeff, for Sammy, for Will, I'm Bear. Bless you, bet. The more you lose when you win. Mm-hmm.